Hello and welcome back, short video, just thought I'd do a quick update, I've got videos in the pipeline, don't worry, I uploaded them last night at home, there's three videos to come, I think one later on today, Saturday, one on Monday and one on Wednesday, different, varying different things, I'm sure you'll enjoy them, um, it's some interesting stuff coming up, this is just a quick update, I'm not, I, d I decided not to do the whole filament of setting up, because it's my first time in six months, it all went well, champion, um, We'll have a little walk around, shall we? I'll show you around my caravan, show you around what we're doing. With what I'm, I'm trying to work out what time it is, because my phone tells us the time, and I haven't got the other phone. Let's go into the caravan, because I've got my works phone in here. Let's have a look what time it is now. There you go, two, that'll be back to front, 2.50. And we only got on site at 12 o'clock. Uh, sorry, half past 12. So, that's a lie. No, I would have been more like a quarter to one. We got it on here. So we're all done and dusted in a couple of hours. Literally set up now, ready to have a beer. There's not much more to do. I've got to put a stake in the floor to tie the dogs to. And that's it, we're done. Uh, me and Holly can't believe uh, things have went so well. It's freezing cold. All the other times I've been away on holiday in the caravan, it's been boiling, unenjoyably hot actually setting up everything. So this has been a pleasant change, but it is a bit on the cold side. So... We'll start off with the inside and we'll work our way out because Holly's already outside at the moment. So, inside of the caravan, show you around. Things aren't fully set up yet. Uh, the telly, by the way, I, I will be watching YouTube and everything when I'm away. Amazon, tell you one thing with these, get yourself an Amazon Fire Stick. As long as you've got 3 or 4G, use your phone as a mobile hotspot and you can have full telly the same as what we do at home, which is fantastic. So, um, that'll be getting set up with the Amazon TV Stick, with the Amazon Fire Stick. Um... So that's spot on. So that'll be getting put on there later on. Uh, the microwave um, glass bowl thing is to go in. Uh, so that's that done. Obviously, this is a seating area. Got the sunroof. It's fantastic when you're plugged up to the uh, electrics because you've got your full electric heating, which is great. And you've got all your separate little ducts where it delivers the air around the caravan. And that one is under there and the other one is in the, in the bathroom at the back. The little one down there so yeah a little walk around obviously not not a huge amount of space but like i've said it's fantastic for what we need there's going to be two adults two kids and two dogs in here the night and it fits perfectly fine all those are little shelving units i may put the tv on here that folds out to be a table there's a table in here this lifts up like i said through the day you've got a nice big seating area or you can have a lie down this is a double bed this here is like a breakfast area normally. There's like two seats, a seat there, a seat there, and a table, obviously with the window. There is a window in there, uh, but we just use it permanently as the bunk beds for the kids. So we've got them set up, plenty of storage, and at night time the curtain goes around them. Uh, so if you decide to sit in the caravan, it's, it's not going to stop any like TV noise or anything, but it just stops the light on them. So walking around here, obviously I've shown you full central heating. Hot and cold running water. Got the hot water heater on there now. Spot on, so that's that done. The hot water switched on but all your heating controls on here you can either use it on gas or electric but why would you use gas when you get the electric for free well you on your side fees um all the aerial plugs i don't bother with them because the signal is crap and you only get the basic tv uh anybody out there especially the older generation don't understand phones and that honestly just give give yourself a little like i told me dad give yourself a little couple of hours of an it lesson there's nothing to it if you if you have a smartphone You'll be able, and you've got data on your network. I pay twenty pound a month to Vodafone, and I get a hundred and sixty gig gigabytes. You'll never ever use that. I can I can upload all my videos I put on YouTube and sit and watch telly in here all the time, and it would take you getting some through that. But even so, for about twenty five quid, you can get fully unlimited. I've never felt the need, and I, I'm a heavy user for data. I'm obviously doing the channel. Never felt the need to have to get the unlimited. So, yeah, um, great that with having the, everything I want on the telly. Absolutely everything. Um, we don't watch live TV at home anymore. We cancelled the TV licence ages ago, uh, but two or three years ago, and it's fantastic. Uh, we just don't watch BBC iPlayer or live TV. But as you are here, I'm not in my house. I'm on a campsite. I can't actually go on to the um, uh, ITV and all the rest of it and go on it because you don't actually need a TV licence if you're in a public area watching it, which this is. So, um, anyways, let's not get on about that. But yeah, site fees have gone up quite a bit this year. For five nights, this has cost £175, but this is what you call a caravan and camping site, but it's called a club site. It's absolutely beautiful, this site. Uh, well, I'll show you a bit when I'm outside. Um, the park for the kids, but the but the main reason I like the club sites, there's one in Powburn, there's one in um, Berwick, 
and there's this one here in Durham and there's a few other ones and the ones that are classed as the club sites have like the like the nicest, cleanest, best top facilities. And I must say, for me, my, my partner likes our, our home looks reason really that, but for me, plenty of toilets, like as in toilets for in the morning, because I went to the Haven site and there was um, a queue in the morning. There was like three cubicles between like nearly 100 caravans. Don't like coming to queue in the morning to go for a crap. <laughs> I, I draw the line at that, where the club sites are like kind of like there's like eight like uh separate let's like, say eight toilets like about probably five or six urinals that's separate little cubicles like what you would have a toilet to go into with a sink so you can stand and have a shave in your own space or you know whatever and then obviously the showers again they're nice and big they're clean they haven't got them horrible things you push and they keep going off every five seconds you just turn a tap on leave it lovely I like that. That's be bare minimum for creature comforts. Like, uh, so. Anyways, while we're on the on the on the subject of toilets and having a crap, <laughs> welcome to my bathroom in here. Um, it's got the full walk-in bathroom. This caravan, which I really like, because you can shut the door and you've actually got your own privacy. You know, like for getting changed or whatever. If you've got quite often, we have guests over at the caravan. And if you want to get changed, a lot of these caravans where they've just got like a little box with a with a toilet in where you can barely even stand up. It just means, you know, you've got a bit more space. Full chemical toilet. It's great, this one. It's just a cassette that pulls out. Uh, but this is strictly only for through the night. Uh, for number ones only. No number twos at all. Uh, but the toilet block's two seconds away. Um, but yeah, nice fitted bathroom in here. Lovely with the, with the jewel mirrors. A, a sink, wash basin, whatever you want to call it. Plenty of storage. Full walk-in shower with the sliding glass. Again, that's as big as something you would get in a house, which I really like. Unfortunately, I'll put my hands up. I've never used it. It's just being used for storage. Um, why, when you can just go into the ones on the site, which are nice and clean, you're not having to mess around changing water bottles and stuff. But again, in the wardrobe, lovely big wardrobe, plenty of drawers. This is a cracking caravan for 20-year-old, I'll tell you. Full-size fridge. It's not the greatest, um, but I did repair that last year, put a new uh, uh, heat out thermal conductor thing in it full size oven grill and four hobs on there like i've said your sink so yeah nice in here obviously a mirror when you walk in got me keys on the hook because i'm constantly losing them and obviously walk into the walk awning this is an air awning so it's fantastic no pulls it's, it don't get us wrong if you get strong winds or heavy rain these things are not fully watertight or nothing like that but all we use this for is just to sit we've got like a little fan heat that we're going to put in um on a night time me and my partner when the kids are asleep just sit and have a chat have a few drinks whatever um and we're going to put that little camping table up in here and it's just somewhere to keep the dogs uh, rather than having them in, in the caravan all the time. They're coming at night, the big and sleeps here, and this is your new experience with the puppy. We're going to attempt to have him in his bed here. That's going to be interesting tonight when we go to bed for sure. Um, so anyways, into here, into the owning. It's a nice size. It's a three-quarter size. So obviously we've got uh, the cool box running there. We've got the dog, one of the dog beds, the other one's in the car. A few of their toys. Most importantly, two bottles of beer with my name written on them. Uh, like I said, I'm getting it set up with the draft excluder. I've got the uh, four plugs to use in here. I've got the extension, which plugs into the cupboard in here, where there's an outside plug, and that's your mains going in. Uh, so I've got the cool box running. Lots of goodies in here. Lots of nice things for... Um, nice lamb curry I'm going to make in the slow cooker. Uh, I've got a sausage and diced beef casserole we're going to make. Slow cooker is brilliant. You just bang the slow cooker down there, chuck the ingredients in in the morning, you come back at the end of the day and you've got a lovely hot meal. So it saves all the frying and the cooking and the stink in the caravan. But what I have got for outside is a little portable uh, stove and on, like on Amazon and whatnot you can pick up the, like, the gas um, top-ups for like, I think like t nine quid for, uh, I think you get nine quid for like four of them. And I just use that outside just to like do the frying and cooking uh, rather than using the big gas bottle in the caravan. So yeah, I've got all my goodies and stuff in here. This one's nice because like, the curtains come down from there to the side. That one needs opened up actually. We've got that one pulled back. These do have slidey curtains on. Truth, truth have it, I can't be asked to fit them. <laughs> I'm not really that bothered. Uh, there's nothing really to see in an awning. Uh, so you know, that's the main one where cars are driving by. You can shut them. Two doors. Obviously one, like the fly screen. And the other one's got, like, where you sh should have completely. So we'll go outside now. I'll give you a little walk round. On the car subjects, the Mercedes has towed this caravan here. Like, basically had a garden trailer on the back. It's been fantastic. So, yeah, Dan's new project. 
but the new battery on it, I don't think any of you have seen this because I haven't done an update on it. I've added a new battery on it. It's, it's not a new battery, it's an optional extra. So it's a dual battery one now, 48 volt. It can do about 45 miles on a charge as well as about 25 miles an hour. So I'm going to have a little bit of fun on that. I'm not going to lie if I don't get wrong off the people on the site. Two nice comfy seats, which I've bought from home with the pillows on them. And have a little walk around. If you spot any faults, I've only been camping four times in my life. So it's the first time I've been... This is my first time this year, so it ain't going to be perfect. But like I've already reminded everybody on my channel, we come camping to have fun, not to just sit around and look good. Everything's to be used. I've just spotted something I've forgotten to do. I need to put the um, wastewater thing into there. Yeah, lovely view over there. Across the... Don't, we'll have a walk down there. We'll have a quick walk. Do a quick pan shot of the caravan. I think that's looking spot on. And the old Merc. There's the Holly getting the two dogs out. Yeah, down here, this must be some kind of a little, uh, like, tent pitch area, because there's electrics to it. But lovely to the back over there, there's sheep. Really nice. Lovely views. I think quite a few of my viewers are from the northeast. You'll probably recognise this area. Right over there, you might see the brightly coloured things. I don't want to touch anything to zoom in, but I think that's Ad Adventure Valley, which we're thinking about going to. I don't know. But that caught what I last time will come here. But, yeah, so we'll have a walk back. There's Holly taking the two dogs. Charlie's blasting around on his bike. I want to try and get... Char I don't know if you've already seen this, but I want to try and get Charlie in to show you he's... Uh... But there's Charlie. Check this bike out. Just watch that car, though, Charlie, because he might be coming back. There we go. Really fast. Olivia's got hers as well. Say hello, Holly. <laughs> hello. Say hello, Hunter. Hello, Harvey. <laughs> Say hello, Daddy. She's on hers. A lovely sight, this. Fantastic. He has Charlie speeding up. Oh. I just got talking to the neighbours there. But there's Charlie. There you go. Have you been speeding? Have you been speeding on that bike? There's your boy, Racer. Sorry, I just got distracted there. Um, I just dumped the car in front of those uh, people's caravan when we got the when we were unhooking and stuff. And I, they went out before. I totally forgot they would be coming back, so I just had to just move the car out that way. So yeah, we'll have a quick look round the car. Super impressed with this old girl. Honestly, just tows this caravan like it's nothing. And the, the, this caravan must be well over well well over a uh, ton and a half. Um, but yeah, no problems. Absolutely great. And to be quite honest, the fuel gauge hasn't even moved. Uh, we've got stuck in some traffic and whatnot, but um, so we've just come to the toilets there. Lovely little area where you can go in, like a kind of, you know, lean to area. Got the washing facility, dishwashing, laundry, baby washroom. Obviously, into here, I have just been in to check there isn't anybody in, so at least I wasn't. But this is what I'm talking about. Absolutely spotless. All them urinals. One, two, Three, four showers, five, and you've got your six toilets, two standard sinks, and you've got all these separate areas, which is spot on when you just want to get a shave in the morning. So, yeah. Basically, that's why I picked the club sites for, and it's absolutely lovely warm. All the radiators blaring away, mirrors. So yeah, I'll leave that there. I just wanted to show you. That's why I prefer coming to the club sites. I just thought I would add this into the little bit of caravanning, just to show that food in caravans and stuff doesn't have to be all bacon and sausage frying on a pan outside and... Uh, you know, the usual stuff, you have, everything you have at home. And it's fantastic. Like, we are, our heads are spinning here. I've got two dogs going crazy, two kids going crazy. Something you can cook simple, easy, but at the same time not crap, like putting something into a microwave. So I'll just show you what we're doing. I mean, we're just about to leave now to go for a few hours. Probably not be battle tea time. So this is perfect, absolutely perfect. I mean, we have got the microwave. We have got the, the, foot, the full oven and everything and hobs, but... Slow cooker from home, same one we use at home. Slow cooker bags, absolutely fantastic those things are. So when you're finished doing it, 
you don't you don't have to bother washing it you just lift the bag up put it in a bin job done so all you do simple as anything get yourself whatever you want to make chili con carne curry flipping, out you want joint of beef which we'll be having tomorrow night there we go got some coma before anybody says uh going on the mild side of things i've got a spicy curry somewhere in here but when there's uh two adults two kids and two dogs in this small space you get what i'm saying <laughs> not having to rush up through the night for unknown reasons so yeah um we're gonna go along the lines today let us know if you if you if you would if you like this coma Morrison's diced lamb, got to be lamb, got to be a lamb coma every time for me. I'm not keen of it uh, with chicken and stuff like that. So yeah, that on about increasing costs, that was six quid for some diced lamb. Few mushrooms, few chopped up, uh, chopped up onion, and I had some spring onion. I bought some spring onion for something else. No idea if spring onion even goes in a curry, but I had some lye in there, and I thought, well, we'll just bang it in. So easy as that. Stick the curry in. So it's easy as that, there we go, charge the scooter up, bang it in, mix it up, lovely jubbly, stick it on to low, obviously I'll not be leaving it on top of the cool box, there you go, job done, leave that about sort of five hours or so, you can, you can speed it up if you want, we're just leaving it on low, I don't even know what time it is now, but uh, I can't see the time on my phone, but that'll be ready by the time we get in, all I've got to do, dish it up, got some poppadoms down there, put some rice in the microwave, Exactly the same meal you would have at home. How the slow cooker bag in the bin. Not even any washing up to do, bother you. Obviously the food that you eat it off. Just thought I would add that one in. Now it should be called Cardiac Chef. <laughs> so, yeah. Just a just few little ideas, you know. Like, I mean, obviously that down there. It's my little camping stove. That's perfect just for banging some, you know. This morning we've done sausage, chicken, eggs, things like that. Uh, last night we had a barbecue, disposable one again when you're finished. Throw it away, job done. Obviously, the next day, you don't go throwing uh, hot barbecues into the bin. Um, that's how, how we work. So we've got a joint of beef to stick in the slow cooker tomorrow. So we'll come home tomorrow. Um, we'll have hot beef sandwiches. Then we've got some mince and chilli con carne mix. So chilli con carne the next day in the slow cooker. And what's the other one? Casserole. Uh, diced beef, sausage. And a casserole mix thing, bang it in, slow cooker, does it all, it's fantastic, definitely, if any of you guys out there are camping, never mind camping, forget camping, camping, home life, we use our slow cooker every single day, bang the stuff in in the morning, come home, and let's face it, it's not like, you know, quick and easy meals and microwaves and stuff like that, like takeaways, it's crap, this is genuinely healthy, good food, and it, you know, it actually tastes nice, so the fact it's convenient just putting everything in in the morning and coming home and it's cooked. It's actually good food that you can cook in them. I'm sure there's a million and one other recipes. Anybody out there recommend anything, what you put in the slow cooker, please send it across. It'll be interesting to know. So leave that in. Totally unrelated to kind of anything, but I just thought I'd add that one in. But now we're heading out the site for the first time on foot and we're going to see where we can find out of earshot of my missus. I hope there's a nice little pub somewhere so we can stop, but... I don't know, never been to this area in my life. I know Durham Park and Ride is at the other side of the roundabout, so I've got to cross over the top of the A1, which will be quite interesting because it's not something I've ever done where I live because to get to any kind of major crossing point of a dual carriageway is miles away, really. It's not somewhere you'll be on foot. I know that sounds really sad, but I just, as you know, when you drive all the time on motorways and dual carriageways and you see the crossings and seeing people standing watching... Um, it is sometimes quite interesting just to stop in a five minutes, see if you can see any unusual vehicles or any idiots doing 100 mile an hour. But uh, nevertheless, something which I think Charlie will probably find interesting. Holly won't. Uh, but you never know. Uh, we might see an interesting car on the way or two. I'll do a bit recording if you want. So yeah, I'll add this into the video um, somewhere along the line. It might not all match in, but I'm just going to try and do one video for caravan related stuff. Well, camping related, holiday stuff. So I'll catch you soon. Just thought I would show you outside of this site. I mean, this is the entrance of it here. We're all just ready to go and have a walk. So it's it's really spot on design, actually, because you, you just drive straight in through the barriers. You get a key for the barriers at night. But what's really important is having this space here, because as you all know, with these little tight country lanes, when you check in, if you're there before check-in time, you struggle a bit, you know? So obviously, um, it's nice to have this space here. If you're there early, you can just pull up, or if you can't get on, there's plenty of space for everybody to wait. 
And there's this sister, this across here, highways agency. Traffic officers. We all know what these are like. The ones stopping the road. I didn't realise I was such a big centre. I was one just pulling in up there. So I'll I'll stop this here. Obviously, there's the entrance. And I'll just, I mean, I'll show you a bit more as as and when we go up to where you come off. How oh, it's such a good idea. How close we are the A1. So yeah, gonna walk. Gonna have a little walk. See where we can find. I do know up that way. That way is into Durham. But that way, you cross the A1 and there's a park and ride. So we're going to go and inquire about the park and ride um, to whether or not you can have, A, for a start, dogs on the bus. Or maybe it's fancy having a day at Durham tomorrow. Um, but this might sound ridiculous, but I'm one of these kind of people. The old fella who worked with Joe, he was exactly the same. Once I'm on holder, the car's parked up, I'm not driving. I want to be out every day in Durham. If I want to have a pint, if I want to do whatever, I can't be asked. And with the price of petrol at the minute, especially my Jeep, I can't be bothered driving at the centre of Durham, using all the petrol, paying for parking, queuing in traffic. I'd sooner, if the, if the parking ride's two seconds to the left, across the A1, I'd sooner give that a go, you know? So I'm just like that, I always have been. Like, other people are different, you know? But at, once I'm on hold and the, and the car's parked up, I'm finished till we come home, unless obviously it's an essential reason. Uh, but yeah, that's. Let us know what's your opinions. Do you guys, when you go on holiday in the car, obviously, um, do you like to drive around every at the different places? Which is fair enough. I mean, we're considering going up to like Beamish maybe, but again, we're stuck with the dogs. Adventure Valley, stuck with the dogs. So the only thing I can think of realistically is Durham on the park and ride. But that's a place here, yeah. Highways England. That's all like the traffic uh, officers or whatever you call them. Uh, so it's right on the entrance of one of these. And as you can see, this is the main dual carriageway off the A1. Well, the roundabout from the A1, so it's dead easy to get into. So once I get up to the top here, I'll do a bit of filming. But uh, it's really close to fast moving traffic. And obviously, I kind of have Holly pushing a pram with two dogs and Charlie without having his hand held. So I'll pause it here and I'll come back to it and I'll probably be standing on the flyover of the A1. Do you want to go and see all the cars going very fast? Yeah? yeah? We have to hold hands because it's very busy. So we're going to cross over here. I'm just going to pause it now. So yeah, as you can see, this is where you come off the A1. That roundabout there is the A1. And you come where that mini is there, onto the little slip road, and you cross over straight up there. So it's champion, you're straight off. I'll just switch this round. So yeah, straight off the A1. Right on the roundabout, bang, you're at the site. No country roads, no twisting roads or nothing. But as you can hear, it's really busy and loud here. We're going to get across and I'll get back to you when, when I'm in a safer place to be recording. So yeah, this is where you come off the A1. Straight onto that bit slip road there and you cross over. So it's absolutely perfect, but I'm gonna, I'll come back to you as soon as I get around this corner. Because as you can see, there's not much space. And it's practically, I like walking on the A1 here. Charlie's enjoying this. Are you enjoying this, Holly? No, let's just get off this road. But there, above the A1, you've never been somewhere like this before, have you? Apart from when I was a kid, I haven't been either for years. You see loads of people standing up here doing, uh, what is it, truck spotting? Don't they? Let's see if we can spot a fast car, shall we? So, we're going to head up there, see if we can find this park and ride, and hopefully find some shops or somewhere to get a bite to eat. So, yeah. Not looking too bad to say, what day is it today, Sunday? Not too busy, so. Oh, two seconds. It's really difficult trying to hit a little button to switch the camera over. But yeah, so there we go. Hit Durham. I'll come back to you as soon as we've got anything of any interest to record. Obviously this is no countryside thing, so. I think there's a river, the river we are somewhere, but I don't know. We need to find this out first. So I should come back to you when I find anything whatsoever of interest. Yeah, so so here we are at the park and ride, quite a big area. Um, I'm just going to do the camera hold up. I don't know if you can see over my shoulder all them caravans in the background. I'm not going to try to draw too much attention uh, to myself, but I've went to have a look, but naturally the whole place, like, closed and stuff. Um, so I've went and got a... Went and got the phone number from the, the board, but uh, there's a lot of travellers who've decided to move in uh, up there. It's strange because we went, we went to Leeds um, just before Christmas, and the same thing was there, like Leeds Park and Ride, Temple Meads, or whatever they call it. Um, that was a huge travelling community had moved in 
there. I don't know how on earth they're getting away with being in here. But the only thing is, um, I don't have anything against uh, them guys. But, you know, um, I certainly, I've got two Springer Spaniels and stuff like that. I don't want to get too close to them. So I've just walked up, got the bus times. Um, I'm just going to make my way into some kind of town uh, up the road. I don't know. Just We're having a look on Google Maps. We're just finding my way. I've never been here in my life. It's what I quite like to do, urban exploring. I do quite a lot of countryside exploring. This is different to me. Um, I must admit, I do prefer walking up country roads and lanes, trying to find things rather than all of this with roaring traffic and loud cars. It uh, takes the edge off it a little bit. So, yeah, going to get out of here for now. I was going to do a little video of we're down at the park and ride, but um, certainly not going to draw my attention to myself, especially recording and stuff like that in case... Uh, that's any unprovoked uh, violence. <laughs> so I'll call, I'll get back to you if we find somewhere on my way up here. Yeah. Well, we couldn't have found somewhere better, could we? This is in yeah. Belmont. Yeah. Ideal. I've got my own little area there for the dogs sitting outside, taking Italians. The name of it's down here somewhere. Is it? That's what it is there. The Italian Steakhouse. Spot on. We've got the heating on. Got a pint of Guinness. The dogs are tied up. The kids are behaving. Could be a bit better weather. Happy days. I'm going to leave that one there. Um, we've got some food on order. Now we know there's, a, there's an Italian's about a 15 minute walk. Probably something we're going to do next week maybe. Have a walk down if they've got like a lunchtime special on. The ideal. But I really didn't expect this. Having the full on heating lamps. We've got the nice seating. So even if we come down and it's raining with the dogs, even if I'm sitting outside, I would still happily sit and eat in here. Um, if it's drizzle and you've got the heating, so spot on. Yeah, I'll leave this one here. Um, I'll join this one in the end piece I've already d uh, done because I wasn't planning on recording anything. Um, I would add some stuff of when I'm in Durham, but when we've got two dogs in a city centre uh, and two kids, it'll be probably quite hard work. So I'm going to sit here and enjoy a couple of pints with the heating on. Let the kids have a bit run round. It's champion because they're out the way of the cars and everything in this recessed area. So happy days. I'll leave it here. I'm going to enjoy my holders now. I said I would let you uh, see a little bit what we're up to. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I know it's turning more like a tourist and travel site, but, you know, clearly when I'm off work, I can't record car stuff. But I have got plenty lined up for you while I'm off this week, so you'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching. The next piece will join in for the end piece. Bye. I've tried filming around the site, but it's quite difficult because obviously I want to show the park, but there's kids playing in the park uh, in reception. Um, I'm trying to keep my head down from the guy in there, not to draw too much attention to kind of cause any tent issues on the site. So, yeah, I just want to show that I've just found this lovely area here. Obviously, there's a little bit there for, like, if you can see the electric cook-ups for the camping. It's a lovely forest kind of area, obviously being hit by Storm Arwen. In uh, dog area, free to roam off lead. Um... So it's great round here. As you can see over there, can you see the cars moving? Don't know if you can see just through the trees. That's the A1 just there. I don't know if it's the way the wind, the direction the wind's blown, but you can hardly hear anything. So, yeah. So there are the dogs over the moon. Holly's got the two kids at the park. In fact, I think this, if we just walk around, I'll be able to show you the park from a distance. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. It really is a good, good sight, this one. Um... I've still forgot what it's called. It's called Durham something view. Spring view, I think they're called. Uh, so, yeah, great dog walking facilities all around the site. Can't really complain. <laughs> Flies everywhere now. You can tell it's becoming it's starting to be spring. Um, I was on my scooter. Sound. Yeah, had to have a go with the scooter around the site. Uh, that was quite interesting. Got a few looks, but no issues. So, yeah, that's... I've had a really, really good afternoon setting up, no issues whatsoever, so highly recommend this site if any of you are into your camping and stuff like that. Um, so